Hello everyone, my name is Jim Lewis and I'm the inventor of all of these LED lighting products that go in N-scale and HO-scale model railroading cars and also uh, the LED scene controller which we're going to be talking about today. So I have uh, the box here uh, and the unit and all of the different variety of products and so we're going to be zooming in and I'm going to be stepping you through all of these capabilities. I really wanted you to have a very comprehensive uh, view of the scene controller and all of the many things that it does. It's very flexible. Uh, it has a DCC decoder built into it, so if you have DCC, you can control and program it uh, from your DCC system. It has a keypad on the front, so you can program it without DCC. You don't need DCC, but if you have it, terrific. Uh, the kit comes with a power supply. Uh, this is an 18 volt power supply and there's a barrel plug into which you can plug it and fire it up. Uh, it will also work natively with the Woodland Scenics power supply. So this is a JST plug, stands for Japan Standard Terminal Plug. And we made the LED scene controller to include a plug that will work with your Woodland Scenics power supply. So I just plugged it in. When the system boots up, it goes one, two, three, four, and it's ready to go. So we're gonna zoom in now and I'll step you through how that works. This is the LED Scene Controller 2 from Model Train Technology. It has 16 ports. Uh, it's an animation controller for LED lighting. And we have a keypad on the top. We're gonna to show you that in a minute. As I mentioned, there are two source uh, plugs for power. One is uh, for the barrel plug, which comes with the kit, and you simply plug that in and turn the switch, and that, that's one option. Uh, the other option is, and that's what we'll be using today, is the Woodland Scenics power supply, and this is the end of that power supply, and there's also a plug for that. Now, there are two power inputs. We don't want you to turn them both on at the same time. Well, you can't. So that's why we have a switch in the front. And so it chooses between them. Uh, also, all of our scene controllers come with a bracket, mounting bracket, and uh, there's a little latch and that just slides right in. So that could be mounted vertically underneath the layout, however you like. So we're gonna put that aside for right now. Our LED scene controller kit comes with uh, 16 LEDs. Uh, you can buy them in groups of eight and they have LED chips already soldered onto them so all you need to do is plug them in. Now if you're familiar with Woodland Scenics products they come in this tube. This is an LED uh, from Woodland Scenics and very similar but this is, this, this is it. All right and so these can plug into your LED scene controller. What we're going to do right now is just turn the power on and the blue light indicates that we do have power to the unit. It flashes one, two, three, four, which tells you everything is okay. And we're gonna take right out of the box a Woodland Scenics light. We're gonna plug it into port one. And I had already programmed this to flash. And so sure enough, there you go. There's a flashing light. Uh, there are other types of lighting from Woodland Scenics here. The LEDs mounted on a chip. Um, these are fine and we support them. Uh, there's the other blinking light there. Uh, so you can have up to uh, 50 Woodland Scenics or 64 LEDs. In order to have more LEDs connected, you would use our connector. And this is a one to four connector and that plugs also into our LED scene controller. Now here is the LED that we like to use. Uh, this is the one that we've manufactured. And uh, these come in four colors of white and RGB. So uh, this one happens to be a 3000 lumen LED white. It's uh, just a standard white. Uh, these also can be, so we sell these in chip form. So if you want to solder your own wires on, these are $2 a piece. So in this whole thing, we wanted you to have the most uh, number of options and inexpensive lighting. Uh, $9 for two LEDs is a little bit high. I didn't want to spend that money and that's uh, what, why I invented this in the first place. So these chips are easily installable in a variety of places. Uh, you can simply use modeler's glue, they're flush on the back, or you can use double stick tape. 
and in the package wiring we've already soldered them on for you. So that's what I have right here. This is already pre-assembled and I'm going to just plug it into our control unit here. And right now it's blinking, so let me show you how we do that. The, the controller right now without the display on means it's in animation mode. To put it into configuration mode, you push this button and you'll see one and whatever the special effects code is, there are a hundred special effects built into this. So instead of buying lightning and flashing lights and car lights and all of those things separately at between 10 and $15 a piece, well, gosh, that's $150. The, the unit itself is $120 and the kit's $150 with all of the things you see here, all the lighting. So it's a much more cost-effective way to do it. So anyway, as you push the buttons on the, this side, you'll see we're going all the way up through uh, 16, so one for each channel, and then back to one. So that we're on LED port one, and three, I know from the chart, is blinking. There are hundreds of animations that are set up. Uh, so at the top here, there are different speeds of blinking and flashing, as you might guess. We have flicker, blink, beacon, fading on and off, random selection, step, I'll show you that in a second, flashing in a TV simulation mode. We also have Mars, we have three flavors of welding and three types of lightning, a whole variety of animations. Again, all of those are included and there's a manual uh, that tells you exactly how to use it. So that's really simple. But after a few minutes, after I show you this, you won't need the manual. So right now it's on three is the animation. As I mentioned, that's blinking. To demonstrate this, we're gonna put this into a, a beacon mode. So beacon will fade down, fade up, and flash and fade down. So that I know is a special effect four. I'm gonna save that and then hold this again to push it back into animation mode. And you can see now that we're now, this LED is gonna operate in the Mars uh, mode. If I connect two LEDs to adjacent ports, okay, I'm gonna plug another one in here. I'm gonna go back into programming mode and I'm gonna configure these two LEDs to alternately flash back and forth. So the way I do that is I'm gonna set the behavior or special effect for port one, that's the one that's lit, to eight and save that. Now watch what happens when I move this dial to port two, the next LED lights up. Now it was on one, which is on, always on. So we're gonna move that to eight. And so now both of these are gonna be set, configured to alternate flashing. I'm gonna put it back into animation mode and you can see that they're alternate flashing. So, and the speeds, as I mentioned, there's a whole variety of different, different speeds you can do with that. So that's the introduction to the LED scene controller, 16 ports, 100 animations. Now, I also wanna show you uh, this big thing. Uh, this is a relay. It uses a digital signal, and the LED scene controller can activate one of these LED, these uh, relay boards, which you can buy on Amazon or eBay for about $10. And the advantage of this, the use for this, is these relays switch low current, which comes from the scene controller, to high current. So you could turn on AC circuits, so high voltage circuits. You can have lights uh, in the building go on or other kinds of motors and so forth, or any other device that has a higher current than you want to run off of that. So that's fully compatible, and there's a relay mode available for each uh, port. Uh, okay, so that I'm going to push off to the side for a minute. And I'm going to bring you in, show you one of the, uh, our demonstration models. And what we do with this, this is the same controller, different color buttons, and we used a board inside this one, which has terminal plugs. You can actually buy this board. It's the identical electronics that are inside the LED scene controller uh, with terminal plugs. And in fact, here's the board with the JST plugs, and you can buy this separately as well. So you can buy either of these without the case, if you want to put them out, if you're a modeler, you want to put them out in your layout and you want to save a little money. Now, it's always easier to program with the keypad. We sell the keypad separately, and it's that simple to plug the keypad in. So that's all the insides of the LED scene control that you can buy separately. So, uh, and then once you've programmed it, you can take the keypad out, put that out in the layout, and the animation will run. Now, what we did is we took the terminal version, term, screw terminal version, and put it inside uh, this board here. 
and I'm going to connect the power up. And one of the things, one of the animations that uh, I want to show you is what's called step or chase and race. So I've configured this set of LED ports, all of them to be a, uh, a race pattern. Well, actually, this is a chase pattern, so it goes back and forth. Racing, it would go one at a time. And so you can configure in combinations the LED ports to do a variety of things. You could just do maybe three up and down. You can have them go back and forth. Uh, quite a variety of, of things you can do there. The other thing you can do is connect up a one of our uh, fiber optic adapters, and it's just a little tube here that goes over the LED. You could have that out in the layout, and sure enough, through fiber optic, you can connect this for signaling uh, or for in an indication light, however you want. So some people like to use fiber optics. No heat coming out of this, and you can uh, wire this fiber optic remotely for quite a distance, all right? Now, the other thing that we have here, yeah, let's see, is we have this special system. Uh, this is also fiber optic, so at the end of this is a fiber optic, and we have an LED built inside of this tubing. And so we can simply plug this in to our LED scene controller. And let me switch back the power to this other unit, and it'll come on, and you'll be able to see that we have now fiber optic coming out of our standard scene controller. So this is just a demo unit to give you an idea of how it would work, uh, but that's what we have here. So we sell, uh, on our website, we have these uh, combinations. So it's an LED inside, they're white, uh, connected with a little connector and a short piece of tubing. And if you want, there are a number of companies that sell fiber optic adapters and so forth, and you can use that uh, coupling to then couple it to someplace else in the layout. So uh, quite flexible system. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that this scene controller system is available in a small compact form. Uh, this is the microboard. It has all the functioning uh, special effects that the, the larger LED scene controller has, just in a smaller footprint. And this one has uh, pins on it so we can plug in and out. In fact, we have a test board that we use. This test board can plug in here and then we can run uh, all of these uh, LEDs here uh, to, to configure the layout. Um, but this will go inside an N-scale building. And uh, in fact, the smallest N-scale building that we find. So you can, and this one, all of the systems run off of DCC. If you have DCC, terrific. If you don't, that's okay. There's two ports here. You just plug in your DCC system to the track, and now you can control all of the systems and all the layout using your DCC system. Uh, finally, we have, I mentioned the chips earlier. That's what these are right here. We sell them. We also have uh, red, green, blue LED chips. Let me see if you can see that. And so you can hook up three wires to that, plug it into the scene controller, and do that's how the TV simulation works. So you get a mixture of red, green, and blue, and then you'll, you'll also have a white light in that room. And on our YouTube page, you'll see a, uh, a, a flats scene, three uh, townhouses. And in the upper right window, there's a, uh, we put in our TV simulator. So you can see how that works, it's really great. So if you have any questions, uh, you can email me. My email is jim at modeltrainman.com, or you can visit our website. Our company is Model Train Technology. Uh, typing in technology is sometimes, uh, I keep misspelling it. So you can reach us just as easily with www.modeltrainman.com. So thank you for listening. And uh, if you have any questions about the system, uh, just let us know. Thanks very much.